everybody, Dan Oman, Mike here. The DRF race of the day for Thursday, June the 15th, race number seven at Belmont Park. Three quarters of a mile on the inner turf. It's a second level allowance with a 62,500 claiming option. Let's take a peek at this field. Please scan or click the QR code for race of the day access on mobile, which includes free formulator pass performances. I won't argue with anybody that likes the number two running with scissors, seeking his third consecutive victory, ran in a similar spot at Belmont over the Widener turf last month, and he won very easily. Yeah, just just in really, really good form right now. Two wins in a row where he just sat great trips and then really ran through the stretch to win easily. He even gets Irad Ortiz this time, Dan. Um, he's the horse to beat in current form. We'll throw up the time form U.S. pace projector. Running with Sithers is a tactical horse. We see him down towards the inside in mid-pack. I think that sounds about right from his trip and how it will ultimately shake out. I do agree that the nine into the sunrise can clear off from the far outside post. He chased a very fast horse last time out, and he might not have to work as hard to get the lead here. Yeah, I think they will come out running. He's certainly fast enough to get there um, if nobody else is really, uh, you know, looking for the lead from the inside. And that, I guess that could be the case, Dan. I wasn't really sure if anybody else would necessarily go. Maybe the key to this whole pace thing is the five pine knoll. Um, the, the pace projector sort of has him in mid-pack, but he's, you know, cutting back in distance here. He is a horse who has some speed, though. A horse that will be coming at the end of this race is the number one. That's Big Package. You'll notice he has the LP flag over his chiclet, which indicates he has the fastest late pace rating on Time Form US. So we'll start things off with Big Package, who made his first start of a lengthy layoff against running with scissors last time out. He was bet down to four to one in that race, dropping out of stakes action. And maybe he just needed that start. He has a race under his girth now. This will be his first start for new connections. Yeah, they, they claimed him for the 62.5 last time. Actually, could actually turn out to be a pretty nice claim deck because this horse is good. If they can just sort of get him back into his good form and then find the right spots for him. He he tends to show up and run really, really good races most of the time. He's a very good turf sprinter. He's just not always that tactical. So he is going to need a trip in this race. I actually didn't think he ran, you know, some kind of terrible race off the layoff last time. He didn't really factor in there, but he was trying to race on at the end. And he could certainly move forward with that race under his girth. He ran sixth in that race. He was beaten in that race by running with scissors, who just ran very, very well. And we take a look at running with scissors' performance. He settled right in behind the leaders on the turn, was in cruise control. And once he swings out four wide under Paco Lopez, he wins under hands and heels encouragements. And he runs right by a short price horse in Dr. Jeff. Yeah, a couple of these horses that are back there are behind uh, running with scissors in this race. He just wins this race super easy. He sat a, a perfect trip in this race, Dan. He always looked like he was going to win. And he's just basically ridden out at the end of this race. Like back to back, really strong performances from him. And his tactical speed just probably leaves him in another good trip here. The number three super success ran well on turf two starts back in South Florida against Yes, I Am Free, who's one of their better turf sprinters, and maybe just aimed a little bit too high in his first start at Belmont Park. They ran him for the 80 non-winners of three life. He showed some speed. He tired. I think they're going to revert to the rating tactics that have worked well for him in the past. The class relief helps. Joel Rosario picks up the mount. He has some solid back buyers at a price. Uh, he does, and he could. He's another one who could get the good trip in this race, I guess. Dan, I mean, he did. He ran fine two starts back, as you mentioned, against a pretty good horse. I thought that trip really worked out for him, though. Um, I don't know. He just didn't really run that well last time. He was a big price in that race. I question how good he actually is, um, but maybe he gets a trip at a price and he can be there. While running with scissors had some recency before that victory we showed you, horses like Big Package and the number four, Seven Cents, were coming into that race fresh off of the layoff. Seven Cents just really didn't fire his best shot in that race. Just looked like he was out sprinted from the start and never kicked. He does have some back class. Maybe these connections, and, and these connections win races at prices, we're just giving him one off the layoff. Yeah, that that's certainly possible. These are dangerous, dangerous connections for sure. Um, yeah, he, he ripped us really never fired last time. They took him back to last. They just sat on the inside. He never made a run at it. Um, there was just nothing going on there, but maybe he just needed it. He's a seven year old now, Dan, there are plenty of races on the go back that give him a really, really strong chance in this race. He ran well for these connections, um, last October when he rallied for third, I just didn't really love that performance from, I, I thought he kind of sucked up in that race and got third.
You mentioned that the five pine knoll could be a key from a pace standpoint because he has shown speed in recent middle distance races. The question is, how will that speed translate to this sharper sprint? He has only sprinted once in his career. That was his debut way back in 2019, going six and a half furlongs. It seems the connections have wanted him to be a middle distance horse. He did win over the all weather at Turfway last time out, but he had a pretty easy trip on the lead. Yeah, that, that's an issue for me, too, because he did just sort of get loose there. But he still ran well. And overall, Dan, his form is just rock solid. I mean, it, it, they've run him three times in a row on the all-weather. But this horse handles turf just fine. So you do not have to worry about the surface, which is just all about whether cutting back works for him or not. And it's not an easy thing to do. But he has the speed to perhaps overcome it. And he might be a fair price in this race. The number six after five paid immediately dividends in his first start off the pack quick claim returning to the turf. This is a first level allowance race at Aqueduct going three quarters of a mile. The pace was not very fast and Trevor McCarthy was smart enough to get after five up close to the lead, ended up in the pocket behind the leader, got to the outside. The trip was perfect, but this horse fires in the stretch to produce a career best 89 buyer speed figure and he'll likely show tactical speed. This is a pretty steep class hike though. Yeah, they're moving him way up here. I think it's it's a really it's a much tougher race than the one that he just beat. He did look good winning that race, though. Um, and it was, you know, a real step in the right direction off the claim. And I just think it's worth pointing out, Dan. It's not like that effort came out of nowhere. This horse has back form. This horse is grade three placed sprinting on turf as a two-year-old. So I mean, this horse has always been pretty good, and he actually just ran a really nice race last time. While the seven Maxwell Esquire has to deal with a layoff, we haven't seen him since late October. It's worth noting that he won off of a similar layoff over course and distance at this level back in May of 2022 to kick off last year's campaign. His most recent start, he actually finished ahead of running with scissors. I just didn't think that trip worked out for him. He was saving ground in mid-pack. He kind of got steadied pretty hard entering the turn, and he was in between horses in the stretch and never got clear, but was running on a bit at the end. Yeah, ultimately, it, it, when you go back and watch the replay, it, it sort of feels like Kendra Carmucci would have been better served just to stay on the rail when that field came into the stretch. Um, once he started to steady, though, I think he just wanted to get out of there, so he moved him outside, and the rail actually wound up opening up. That's where Seven Cents came from, who outfinished him from third from behind. He just stayed in and got the rail run. This horse wound up between horses. He ran fine in that race. Um, it's you know This is Maxwell Esquire, Dan. It's all about trip and pace for him because he doesn't have a lot of speed. He likes to sit and try to make one run, um, but you mentioned he was good off the layoff last year. He also won off the layoff going six furlongs on Belmont turf in 2021, and he overcame an impossible trip to do it. Um, so it seems like he really fires fresh. And if he has some pace to run at here, you'll know him late. Outlaw Kid is still a very lightly raced horse. You can project upside form after only six starts. He's a newly turned four-year-old as well. And he won off about an eight-month layoff last year at Saratoga. So he might be ready to go in his first start of the year for George Weaver. I also think while he's run well on dirt, turf is going to be his better surface. Here's his most recent start on grass against fellow three-year-olds in the Carl Place Stakes going three-quarters of a mile. And even though he gets beat as the favorite, he stays on and ran a decent figure. And his two prior starts sprinting on the turf were good so if he gets the right trip i'm not too concerned about the layoff i think he'll be running in the stretch i agree I mean, he, and he's the you know he's the the sort of lightly raised horse with all the upside in here he's shown some potential you know the carl place that we're watching there i mean he ran fine in there i didn't think he had some kind of big excuse he just wasn't good enough in that race despite being the favorite but as you've already pointed out his prior two races we're both really good, and he has great tactical speed. He's super handy, Dan. He might fall into a real trip here. And the horse that we're expecting to make the pace is on the outside. That's the number nine, Into the Sunrise, who's taken a little bit of a class drop in here. He was in against nothing better last time out, who after winning that race, that conditioned allowance, came back to run second in the Jim McKay turf sprint at Pimlico on Preakness Day with a 95 buyer speed figure. Into the Sunrise broke from the rail that day. They wanted to get him off the rail on the outside to chase nothing better, but being placed on a hard chase against a sharp favorite like that probably worked against him. I'm going to take the result of that race with a grain of salt i think he fits well here from a class standpoint and i do think he'll be in front turning for home i think i think all those things are true i won't argue too hard with it um you know he's just been around for a long time he's good i don't think he ever turned out to be as good as it sort of looked like he once might be the most recent win for him came going a mile when he just went a super slow pace 
and barely held on. And that ended a really long losing streak for him. Dan, he just never wins, but obviously he's a contender here. Before we get to our top selections, please click the subscribe button on the Daily Racing Forum YouTube channel for the latest DRF videos. Top pick time for our Thursday race of the day. Mike's going with a horse that runs very well fresh, fits well from a class standpoint, going to kick on late off of a triple trip last time out, Maxwell Esquire. I'm just hoping he gets the right trip in here. He should have some pace to run at. He does tend to fire fresh, Dan. So I'm going to take him. I've always been a fan of his. I like him going this distance on the turf. The two and the eight kind of felt like the two horses to beat to, to me. I put him second and third. The two and the seven horses that you have first and second, I have second and third. I'd be interested in using in multiple race wagers. I want, I like Outlaw Kid's upside. I think he's going to come back more mature with the winter off as a new four-year-old. It'll be interesting what price he ends up being at post time. I think four to one, nine to two seem fair ultimately. Seven two eight one for Mike. Eight two seven six for me. It's the Thursday race of the day at beautiful Belmont Park. Good luck.